what I'd like to kind of come back to, I guess, is intermittent fasting. So you said that the optimal eating pattern is 12-12. Is that correct? Uh, could you talk a little bit about why you think that is best? And would, like, is it better than 8-16 or 16-8? Yeah, better, yes, for certain things is better. Um, again, we're, we're looking at how do you make somebody live to 110 healthy? Uh, so is it better to make somebody live to 110 healthy? No. Uh, and why not? Well, number one, um, people that skip breakfast, uh, they tend to live shorter. Um, they tend to have more cardiovascular disease and they tend to have um, uh, more cancer. Even, you know? So this is every single study that I've seen um, epidemiological um, that has looked at uh, uh, breakfast keepers has shown this, you know, so this is an association. And, and so, of course, you can say, well, maybe this uh, group has some bad habits that we don't know about. Of course, you adjust for those. Um, but then the question has to become, well, you know, if it's so good for you to do 16 hours, why doesn't at least bring you back, be, bring this bad habit back to the normal uh, lifespan, right? So, the, why doesn't it eliminate the negative effects of the bad habit and lifespan and have, at least have a neutral effect? So you have to be concerned when you see that uh, a negative effect over and over and over or a negative association over and over and over with the breakfast skippers. Now, what will happen if you skip uh, dinner? Nobody knows, right? So it may be that with the dinner, if you had dinner skippers uh, or lunch skipper, uh, yeah, lunch skippers, if you uh, well, that'd be that hard to do with lunch if you had breakfast and, and, and dinner, so impossible, in fact. But um, so, yeah, there will have to be dinner, uh, people that skip dinner or, or, or breakfast. Breakfast doesn't work, dinner, we don't know. The other thing is gallstone um, formation, gallbladder operation. They double between uh, the, the 16, 18-hour fasters and the 10-hour ones. And so that's another thing that, it's a red flag and it's just telling you that um, um, this is probably the benefits that you see between 12 and 16 are now worth the risk um, and not at this stage. So I just had a question. So my, my understanding is from talking to other people is that uh, like liver glycogen, the glycogen in the liver will, sub you have enough, to keep you going for like 14 hours before you start getting into the fat stores. That we, but so if you did 12, 12, then you would never deplete that. Would, is that correct? Or does that sound correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, of course these are textbook numbers, you know, then different people are going to behave differently. Lots of people that are maybe on a low calorie diet uh, may have everything depleted after six hours, you know, uh, and some people may take uh, two days uh, to deplete it. Um, yeah, so it, it, there's going to be a, a big range. But that, uh, you know, in general, that's that's textbook right. Yeah. Okay. And and so th there is, I guess, it's not beneficial to deplete that li that liver glycogen because I, I that was my understanding was part of the benefit of the 16 hour is that you do at least switch over a little bit into. Yeah. The you yeah, yeah, it could be part of the benefit. It could also be part of the reason why uh, breakfast keepers uh, uh, in general live shorter, right? So uh, what if that depletion of glycogen eventually put a burden on the, on the heart uh, with fatty acid uh, metabolism? And, uh, and, uh, and that's why uh, you see uh, cardiovascular disease increase in, those, uh, in that population, right? So this is uh, especially the North America and the Americans, uh, the number one killer is cardiovascular disease. Uh, so what if that, that uh, you know, fatty acid-based metabolism is now uh, not helping the heart in the long run? It may help the heart in the short run, but uh, what if it was making it more difficult for the 60, 65, 70, 75 year old uh, um, to, um, you know, to survive? And that's what it looks like. Yeah. So if we are gonna have breakfast, what would you suggest uh, like macronutrient for breakfast? I think that uh, first of all, I suggest that each person finds a breakfast that they can actually like and keep. Uh, if you don't like it, you can't keep it. It's just probably worse than, than better to not change in the first place. 
And um, but uh, yeah, then I, I think that people need to look at um, um, you know a pescatarian diet as much as possible. Um, so you know, in the morning, unless you're allergic or somehow uh, the whole grains uh, uh, give you problems um, uh, because you have uh, gluten sensitivity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, whole grains are, are a good way to go. Uh, fruit uh, in, in the morning uh, c- can also be good. And, um, you know, some uh, nuts or almond uh, or, or hazelnut or, or uh, walnut spread or something like that. Um, um, yeah, so those are just some ideas. It could, it could be, you know, some people may have yogurt and, and, and that's fine. Um, and some people may have, um, yeah, you know, some people may like vegetables uh, for breakfast. And, and I know most people don't, but... Uh, some people do, of course. People uh, and eggs uh, is perfectly fine. I mean, but uh, unless you have cholesterol issues and eggs affect your cholesterol, uh, probably three eggs a, a week or so are uh, yeah. So somebody could say you know, use it in the morning and maybe have uh, every other day one egg uh, uh, for breakfast and uh, plus uh, the, the other things that I, that I've been describing. During the during the eating window, so we have twelve hours to eat. Is uh, like eating frequently, or like eat like once at the beginning and once at the end? Does the, is there any trade off there? Uh, yeah, I think that um, eating frequently. If somebody has got normal weight or is underweight, there is nothing wrong with eating frequently, uh, especially if the type of person that knows that they're not going to gain weight. Right? Some people have a pretty good idea. Uh, I think either frequently for the 70% of Americans that are overweight or obese and the, the other 15%, uh, probably bringing it about to 85%, if not 90, that, you know, uh, certainly are worried about gaining weight. Um, I would say uh, stick with uh, two, two plus one. Yeah. So breakfast, dinner, and then uh, do what I do. Um, either skip lunch completely. I have a coffee for lunch. Or um, or have let's say 100 calorie healthy, and that that's the best I will say be better than what I do. But I just uh, I just uh, have an easier time just having a like a tall coffee for lunch, and that's what I've been doing for 20 years. Uh, but I only do it periodically, right? So and, and that might not be a bad idea, right? So let's say in the summer I spend lots of time in Europe. I tend to have the three meals a day plus a snack. Uh, but when I come back to the U.S., I, I usually go. Monday through Friday uh, without lunch and just a coffee. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday, I, I have the three meals plus a snack, right? So, and that works very well. And now this is in fact, what we're going to test clinically in Southern Italy, starting awfully in January. Um, uh, we're going to put all these things together and, uh, and uh, you know, test the fasting mimicking diet against all these 12 hours, pescatarian diet and skipping a meal Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, is, is a program, uh, and so we'll see what happens. But we already have lots of data, I, I should say, uh, on about 200 patients that are being followed by our clinics, uh, showing that it works very well. So we have, a, we already know it works, um, but um, we need to uh, formally test it, and and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah.